So I want to do something a little different today uh, than we're used to seeing. Um, so I'm not doing a precision haircut, but I am doing a scissor cut. It's a long layer, so fairly self-explanatory. However, I wanted to kind of get back into, we're seeing a lot of like the new mullets and the new shags, and we're seeing a lot of those. And it's kind of changed my approach to my long scissor cuts. Um, so the cut I'm going to do is actually something that I'm doing on my clients currently. Um, and hopefully it will inspire you guys to kind of change it up a little bit. Um, so I was going through, I'll get the iPad out. I was going through some photos and I came across this image of Stevie Nicks, right? We've all seen it. It's amazing. It's very shaggy, but it's shaggy long hair. It's not a mullet. And uh, I was like really checking it out and I loved it. Um, here's another image, right? And especially seeing everything that's going on is it's super current for, for right now. But that took me to reliving my childhood. And uh, this is Lita Ford, for those of you that don't know. Um, and again, same, same type of idea, just styled out a bit more, right? And then, of course, then we have Motley Crue. Same haircut, styled more aggressive, right? The big thing with all of these, here's a great picture of Joan Jett in the 80s. Again, same haircut, styled more aggressive. But the big thing with these haircuts are the bangs and the amount of layering that's done on the top, right? Another picture of Lita. Cool, so that's kind of like my inspiration for today. I hope you guys dig it. Um, I'm actually alone in the studio uh, this is my personal studio space, uh, not the salon. So while I cut, I'm not going to be able to see your questions, but if I go back, I will try to answer them if uh, it's uh, important. Um, so yeah, so I'm just going to get right down to it. I hope you guys enjoy. Thank you for joining me on a Monday. By the way, for those of you who don't know, my name is Douglas. Uh, I'm a global educator with r and Co. And I want to thank Hairbrain for giving us this opportunity to to play around a little bit. So if everybody's cool, I'm gonna get to work. So this is my model. Um, she doesn't talk much, but uh, all I've done, and I'll try to show you guys, is sectioned her hair from where the ear meets the head to the center. Same on both sides. And again, I'm gonna kinda try to make sure you guys can see this. But with those photos and the inspiration, the bangs were really heavy right at the eye because we were doing a lot of styling, so we left them longer so we could bend them more. But I'm gonna go a little bit more of that Stevie Nicks vibe and actually create them longer. And that, that's gonna carry into my length. Every, the section that I have here, if you guys can see it, goes to where the ear meets the head. None of this has anything to do with the length. So I can go in and cut this quite aggressively. Cool? All right, hi everybody. Again, I'm here by myself, so I won't be able to see and answer all the questions. So I'm just gonna take a center section, this fringe area, and then I'm gonna take another section at the recession. Everybody can see that. Now, I wanna go short to long, and how you would usually do it is cut it down this way, or maybe we come off to this side. For me, that keeps it too heavy. I want it light. So I'm actually gonna pull it out away from the head. Don't we just love mannequin hair? 
And then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna comb underneath so that I can put my fingers on top and get this to come around. And you see I've got it twisted. So I'm over directing this area more than I am the center. Yeah? I'm mainly twisting it. Number one, it keeps my length over direction, but also I can twist it and see where I'm going. So I'm literally just gonna cut that out. Deep point cut. I don't want anything blunt. If I do a blunt cut, I'm gonna add weight. So to show you again, go in, go short, slightly longer. I want it really shattered. And I want it to kick back. Right, so a much more heavy feel, but still super cool. You could ferro faucet that out really easy as well. So then I'm gonna grab my next section, below the recession, combing this straight out from the head. I'm gonna do the same thing. Just following that line. Remember guys, it's not precision, it's the idea. I'm gonna around the front so that it'll go back. I want it away from the face, yeah? Very reminiscent of how we're doing kind of the modern shags and the modern mullets right now. Don't need that. So to make sure you guys can see this. See, it's got that great kickback. And it's kicking back down here. And I'm just working that into my length. So I'm going to do the other side. This one's going to be a little more tricky for you guys to see because of the camera. So I'm going to make this as easy as possible. Again, to the recession. This is my fringe bit, my bangs, depending on where you're from. I'm gonna twist that. I'm gonna work my way down. Sorry if you guys can't see. Okay, it gives it that great feather, which is a great term we use 70s and then through the 80s. Now at the below the recession, twist it again, work my way down to the length. Grab the rest of it, pull it straight out from the head. You gotta get aggressive with it, so don't angle it down. You're gonna create weight. So I wanna over direct it all forward. Chisel in on it. See how close we get. Yeah, that's cool. So you can see the front bit starting. Now back in the 80s when we do a cut like this, the important bit was the top was about this long, just long enough to get a curl into it, you know, not to mention the perms. But to go from that short to hair that was this long, you had to get really creative. And so what we would do is we just keep pulling everything to about the tip of the nose. The problem with that is that the sides ended up here and the back ended up here. So you got that great V, right? So I don't want that V look and I don't want the sides around the ear that short. 
which is basically a long mullet that we're doing now. So I'm only going to over direct this to just behind the ear. So I'm going to take my next section. Hope everybody's getting this. Hi, everybody. Oh, that's a long one. I'm going to take my next section to just in front of the ear. Make sure you guys can see that. There's my next one. For those of you that are just joining, uh, my name is Douglas. I'm a global educator with Arnco. And uh, I am alone in the studio, so I can't necessarily read all your questions, but I will try to get back to them after this gets posted. And uh, we're doing a kind of an 80s rocker chick hairstyle. I don't know if chick's the right word anymore. Rocker girl. But the guys can wear this as well. Any of your clients that are in bands, especially metal bands, and they want to kind of bring back that 80s glam. This is a great way to do it while it's still being modern. I do have product in here. Um, I have centerpiece from Marnco. And think of centerpiece as like it's a spray. So it's an aerosol, but think of it like leave-in conditioner on steroids. Gives me a ton of moisture. And with the mannequin hair, it tends to be a bit rough. So I'm gonna keep going with my sections. This haircut doesn't take too long. In the salon, after a really thorough consultation, you know, maybe a 20 minute consult, the cut itself only takes about 10 minutes to do. The reason why is because you know your map. You know where you're gonna start, you know where you're gonna end. Now this next section, I'm gonna to continue to pull it straight off the head. And I'm a righty, so I'm on her right side. So I'm gonna put the comb underneath. I can see my previous section and I'm gonna deep point cut slightly longer than my previous. What's nice about this one is this is when the weight starts to show up. But super important to be completely off the head. Don't pull it down. So you're gonna get a really aggressive line. See, that's the money part. So we've got this coming out, we've got that bit. Now I'm gonna start incorporating my length. Again, straight off the head. Slightly longer. Just cut that excess off. Okay, we just got a little bit too much length left, so I'm gonna go back in. For those of you that wanna know what the tools are, it's a YS part comb and Mizutani scissors. There we go. So now we're getting that, that shaggy feel around the front. Turn it ever so slightly. Same bit, completely off the head. Find my previous, 
and go short to long. Her left side, my right side, tends to be a bit easier for me. Remember guys, just chip into it. Don't blunt cut it. See it starting to take effect, right? Shaggy. Not shaggy like shaggy from Scooby-Doo, but sexy shaggy. Okay, my last would be my third and final section. I'll show you where it's coming from. I miss people. Demoing on people is so much more fun. But we gotta do what we gotta do, right? So my last section is going from the high point of the head to just behind the ear where her hairline is. Cool? Now I'll just show you this part since we're here. Get her back just a little bit. Cool. So again, straight off the head. You can see my previous and I'm going to go short. Too long. Again, slightly longer than my previous because I'm cutting into the section. So the tips of the blades are going to my previous, but I'm leaving a little bit of length because we're cutting in. Right? Next section. Straight off the head. Just chip away at it. Now I'm getting into my length. So I'm actually going to pull this slightly down. She's got some tangles. So where all the other sections were here, now I'm coming down slightly. And that's just to preserve some of the length. Cool. You know, I miss these cuts. We did him so much in the 80s, early 90s even, depending on where you lived. With her jawline, she's starting to look like Tawny Katane. That's cool. Same section to just behind the ear. I'll show you guys right just behind the ear right by the hairline section at the recession pulled straight off the head now I'm gonna twist this that way towards her, I could twist it this way, but I can't get my angle. So I wanna make sure that I get my angle this way. So the scissors are almost straight up and down. And again, this is a very kind of 80s rocker girl haircut. What's nice about it is if you do, if you do uh, 
style it aggressive, she'll look like those girls. But if you style it simple, which is what we're gonna do, it's a very modern texture. But yeah, you could perm this or set it on perm rods, back comb the top, hairspray it to death, and you would get definitely that 80s rock and roll, 80s metal look. But I like things modern, and your reference should never be, you should never try to copy your reference. And I'll show you guys, those of you that are just joining, I'll, I'll show you guys in just a minute what the references are. So this section, because I'm getting into my length, is gonna come slightly down. Twist it, knowing that I'm going from short to long. Chip away at it. Remember, it's not a precision cut. It's not supposed to be. I shouldn't see a sharp line because this should be textured. And I'm mainly looking for proportion, right? That's cool. But I'm looking for proportion, does it fit? Are these, you know, laying the same or same-ish? Or my other pieces, the same length. There's my length. I'm actually gonna be going a little bit longer, which you guys will see. That's the whole front. So if I can grab my iPad. For those of you guys who are still with us. So that was the, the idea, the rough draft. If I had put a heavier fringe on her, right? It'd be there, coming down into the length. I love these guys. But because we did this longer, these guys now are sitting down here. And there's another look. But like I said, you know, even Motley Crue back in the day, it's the same haircut, just styled more aggressive. We've got to think about the styling. Styling and the haircut go hand in hand. All right. Now we're gonna get into the back. Now guys, you guys are smart. You guys are really, you know, you got your great hairdressers. You take, you're watching a demo on a Monday on your phone or whatever, right? You've seen a million perimeters. So I don't wanna bore you or waste your time. So I'm gonna explain the idea on the first section and then I'm gonna to get to it. So that the important bit is the layering. So I hope everybody's cool with that. Typical long hair perimeter. Nothing showy here, guys. There's that. I always get, when I watch these demos online and they spend forever on the perimeter, and it's like, come on guys, get to it. So I don't wanna waste your time. You all know how to cut a perimeter. If you don't, you know, go to school, learn, have somebody show you. I'll even plug Sassoon, go to Sassoon. So my length on the sides is right about here. I want to drop it down slightly. I'm going to drop it down to about the middle of her back. This is the point where I'd have my client stand up. Get your client out of the chair. Don't be afraid to do that. If you're working over the back of the chair, 
have them stand up so you can get that line, number one, off the chair. Number two, it's more at eye level. Don't be afraid to make them stand up. They actually like it. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna deep point cut this. And the reason I'm point cutting is because I want it broken apart. I'm not looking for a clean line, but I am point cutting it. So I see sometimes people go in and they point cut a blunt line. And it's like, you should have just went like that. This is a waste of time, but I wanna see it broken apart. And then when I get over here, I'm actually gonna change my scissor angle. So I went in, cut in at this angle, but when I get to the corner, I'm gonna cut back in so that preserves my corner on the outside because I don't want it to come up. Everybody cool with that, hopefully? I do wish I had somebody in here to go with the questions. And I apologize for that, guys. But again, it's the, the world we live in. Like I said, perimeter, it's nothing, nothing crazy. So if you don't mind with your permission, I'm just gonna get through this because the layers again are the most important. Make sure I can see my previous. Again, it's just simple perimeter. Still keeping it clean. And I'm gonna drop this side. It's just easier for me with the mannequin head and with the camera to do one side and then the other side. But in the salon, I'd be doing both sides. I know it's like, it's just a perimeter. It's nothing crazy. But just bringing it straight down, and point cutting that length out of there. And point cut, I want it broken apart. For all you precision cutters out there, I am not trying to make this precise because I want it rock and roll. It should be broken apart. I got a little guy. All right, now that we have that done, I still have my same sections from my front half to my back half, yeah? So I'm gonna keep that and I'm gonna layer this back. Everybody's having a good time. Doo -doo -doo. So what I'm gonna do is take about a one inch section. Well, maybe closer to two. I can't measure anything. So I'm taking a center section right down the middle of the back, leaving that side and that side. So now that you've seen where the section is, I'm gonna turn her. Now, I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see this. I'm gonna pan back a little bit, layers. So I'm gonna take that center section and everything's gonna fall out from the occipital bone. So this is gonna come straight up. And I'm just gonna cut it off. Now I think that should go shorter, so I'm gonna do it again. I'm 
bringing it down so I can see it. And so you can see it. There we go. So now this top is falling right about the occipital bone length, which is great. That's a great length. That's where I want it. You guys can see it. There it is. So now I've got my two side bits, right? I'm taking both of these together, each one in, in its own go. I'm not going to separate this out. Think of it, these corners are basically arrowhead sections, pointed. So I'm gonna section it just above the occipital bone. I'll show you guys here in just a second. Let me comb her out. Hope you guys are having a good time. Nice way to spend a Monday. So there's my arrowhead section. So I'm gonna comb all these from the middle. I'm not over directing it. It's coming straight out from the middle of the section. Right? And now I've got this section. just above the occipital and just above the ear. Now I'm gonna get on this side of her so I can cut it the way I did the on the other side. Hope you guys can see that. I'll bring it down, right? Deep point cut in. And that's it. I've collapsed all that weight out. Right? Cool. Fun, shaggy. Now comes the really fun part. I'm going to take a center section about the same width as the back section over the top. Pan this up so you guys can see it. Look, knock over the lights. I don't know if you guys can see that. Center section. Now I'm going to go from the front to the back. There's my fringe bit. You can see how it already gets goes short to long. I want a little bit shorter. Now you can do this softer by going again short to long, but I think almost straight across makes it a lot more aggressive and a lot more rock and roll. Just chiseling into it. And you can see what I'm starting to get, those layers Go back to the photo. It's these layers. So this whole bit needs to be collapsed. Cool? I think it's cool. So I'm gonna pull my next section down to right at the recession. Cool. I'm going to bring this up to the my previous section. Good old mannequin hair. This is going to be over directed slightly to the middle. And by doing that slight over direction, the layers get longer. Right? So now I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Right at the 
recession, and this is going to get overdirected to the middle. You guys can see that. Find my previous. There it is. There. It's overdirected slightly to the middle. Deep point cut to my previous. There we go. So now all I'm gonna do now is just make sure everything connects. Connects to a point. Let my length drop out. And it's just these little corners right here. And that finishes it. It's just two sections, guys, on the sides to connect. We know this connects. So it's that section right over the ear. She's got, just gives her a little tail. A little tail that we don't want. Maybe you do. Maybe you do want it because it's a rat tail. Maybe rat tails are cool. So this hair is actually almost completely dry. But there's the money bits, what we call it. Especially if you're photographing somebody. You see how it comes out from the face? Gives her her volume. She keeps her length. Right? Super rock and roll. Just to recap, again, we're not done yet. I still got about another 15 minutes, which is really cool, which means I'm actually running on time, which I don't know about you, but most of us never are. So again, that picture of Lita Ford, you can see how it's, let's try that again. It's coming away from her face. She got that heavy fringe, which we could do, but to make it more modern, we left it a little longer. But still the same idea. And it's like, especially with the leather jacket, now we gotta make her look like she can be in a white snake video and dance on a car. So again, the hair is mostly dry. It's got a little moisture to it. Bring her back. Sorry guys, hope everybody's having a good time. So, Rodeo Star Thickening Foam by r Co. A decent amount. Because again, remember, the more aggressive you get, the cooler this looks. working it through mannequin hair so it soaks it up don't ever forget about your ends applying product should be the same technique or being technical as your cut so don't just slap it on the head know where you're putting it And I like using a foam on this because think of what a foam is. Why do we use foams? We use foams because basically a foam is like a powder. It's light, it's weightless, and we can add as much polymer or ingredients that add grip to it as we want. That's why the 80s, the foams in the 80s were so sticky 
because yeah, it was light, so you could get all that volume, but they just packed the polymers in to where it was basically like the grip of a gel. So you had no weight, strong hold. This is about a medium, medium to medium strong hold, but it's light, so I still get volume. Now, normally, like in the salon, I just start drying this with my hands, right? That light is super strong on her. Sorry, guys. So I just go in. This is how I dry it in the salon. Twist it and just use the heat of your hands to start working that curl in, in that bend, right? She's already got it all the volume I want. So now I just need to shape it with my hands. But hey, this is uh, digital. So we're gonna speed things up a little bit. I'm gonna use my blow dryer without a nozzle. The reason why is because I wanna rough this root up. If I have a nozzle, I'm gonna smooth it, whether I'm trying to or not. So I'm gonna pre-dry all these roots. And then I'm going to go in with my hands and start shaping that front. Yeah? Sorry if it was loud. There we go. So it's still a little damp on the ends, but I want that because I just want to use my hands to start shaping and smoothing this out. Again, for those of you who are joining a little late, my name is Douglas. I'm a global educator with uh, R&Co. It's an amazing hair care brand. And we're doing an 80s inspired rocker girl haircut. And how you style it, it's all you. It's whatever you want it to be. I could round brush this. Again, I could set it on perm rods. It could definitely go more for that, like Vixen. If you don't know the band Vixen, look them up. Amazing girl metal band. But she's looking quite cool. Just using my hands to start shaping the texture. Let's face it, our hands are our best tool 
I mean, there, we have our scissors and brushes and everything, but when you can just do it with your hands, I think it always turns out better. I'm just cupping this in my hands so that I keep the wave. She's looking cool. And she's bright again. There we go. My lights are blinding. It's like, how crazy do we want to go? Right? Super crazy. Super crazy is good. So now it goes from same haircut, now it goes a little bit more late 80s. If you guys have seen the uh, film, Some Kind of Wonderful. The character of Amanda Jones to, has this look. Right, it's a little bit more like 80s schoolgirl, right? We put some hairspray in here and really get that to lift, which was another way we did hair back in the 80s. Yes, I'm that old. But it all depends on your reference and where you want to go with it. Now it starts looking a little bit more 80s new wave, right? Sorry, I'm in the light. Let it drop over the eye. And there was this great club in New York in the 80s called the Mud Club. And the look for the Mud Club was all over, right? So you style it that way. So it really gives you all these options. And that's where Knowing your haircut, knowing your map, knowing where you're gonna go, how you're gonna get there, spending time on the consultation with your clients. I usually spend, if it's a new client, anywhere from 20 minutes to a half hour. I book on the hour. 10 minutes of that is the haircut because I've already got it locked in where we're going. And I can spend the rest of the time styling it and styling it different ways for our clients. So this is Balloon, it's a dry volume spray. I'm just gonna work that now that I've got it pretty well dry with my hands. And again, with this haircut, because of how it's done and the idea of it, the more aggressive you get with it, the more aggressive you get with product, the right product. makes it look even better. Right? 80s. No 80s idea would be complete without hairspray. And this is vicious. Uh, it's probably the sexiest hairspray can in the world. Uh, these hands are Amanda Wall, uh, who takes care of all of our packaging. The photograph was done by Howard McLaren. girl cool well thank you guys for joining me I can probably move her out of the way now um, hope you guys had a good time hope you learned something um, and if anything I hope you just got inspired to try to do your daily work differently find the client play with them photograph it document it put it out there for the world to see gets you clients, it gets you noticed. 
builds your career, you know, really builds your eye. Um, so yeah, thanks for joining me. I hope, uh, hope this was good. Um, thank you. Awesome. I got lots of friends on here. I appreciate seeing all of you, especially all over the world. That's what I think is cool about this whole digital idea is that we can get this all around the world fairly quickly, but then we're all in a, this great community uh, of hairdressers from everywhere. And uh, I mean, you guys are all online with each other. And if you see somebody that asked a good question or you think, oh, they look interesting, go follow them, go to their Instagram, follow them, see what they're about, keep in touch, especially with everything that's going on in the world right now. We really need to stick together, bond together, and uh, get through it. Um, thank you, Hairbrain, for giving us this platform. Thank you, Arnco, for allowing me just to do what I do and, uh, and letting me do it. Uh, I really appreciate it. Um, for those of you who don't know, Arnco is doing a drive-in theater education event today. I have to plug it. Uh, the company didn't ask me to, but all my friends are there. It's Howard McLaren, uh, who's, who's one of our co-founders. Um, Adam Federico, who is our director of content. Um, Ray, who is our new, yes, we have a color line coming out, Arnco Color. And uh, he's gonna be there doing some amazing color work. And then my good friend Karina from Pony uh, Studios is gonna be there doing work as well. Go to Arnco's Facebook page, figure out how to register. They're gonna live, they're gonna stream it, but you have to register to see it. Um, and it should be super, super cool, especially right now when we're just all so desperate for education. So go check them out. I wish them all the best. This is my 80s rocker girl. Uh, hope you had a good time and uh, message me, follow me, Instagram, Douglas underscore McCoy 72. And uh, we'll all keep in touch. Take care. Happy Monday, which also happens to be a really great band, but that's another story. Take care and uh, I'm out of here as soon as I can figure out how to turn this thing off.